Good morning, everybody, and happy Valentine's Day. All that love and stuff. Uh, it is the weekend. There's a bunch of things happening this weekend as well with some Valentine's Day stuff. But I'm going to jump into some uh, weather. So if you guys are planning on going out and about, you can expect some snow likely to happen this week as well. So 33 degrees. Uh, your high is going to be 37. Your low is going to be 27. Uh, Saturday, your high is going to be 39. Uh, 70%, 30% chance. You can basically see some high chances of snow likely happening this weekend, which is good if you plan on going on a Valentine's Day ski adventure. You go to a resort, have a nice weekend, that kind of thing. Who knows? It's great. Um, speaking of which, uh, I'm going to throw it to onthesnow.com for more, uh, just kind of like an update on how much snow you guys can expect. Um, so currently, Whitefish had uh, an inch of fresh powder in the last 24 hours. Big Sky Resort had five inches in the last 72 hours. It seems like a lot of places had a lot of fresh power powder in the last 72 hours, but will probably soon change as the weather becomes more uh, apparent when it comes to the snow. So seven inches in the last 72 hours at Bridger Bowl. Red Lodge is getting got 14 inches in the last 72 hours. Whew, just a lot of snow. All around Lost Trail had three inches of uh, fresh powder and all this was updated today. So those are some of the places and if you want to learn more information about your weather and more, you can log on to uh, uh, nationalweather.gov and you can also go to onthesnow.com. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about some news items. Uh, City of Missoula was on lockdown on Wednesday when uh, somebody shot at the rear window of a police vehicle. The city and county officials uh, blocked portions of downtown when an officer's back window was shot out at around 9.45 a.m. A perimeter was made along the government buildings and were immediately locked down. City Hall, uh, council chambers, the county courthouse were on high alert and remained that way until the afternoon. From 2 to 30, the area lockdown was lifted and the courthouse... Um, Hall, but the areas between Ryman, Orange, Spruce, and Pine uh, around the city block near uh, Wardens and Thomas Marbar were on an active investigation looking for potential uh, evidence. Uh, the case is ongoing because they still have not caught the shooter. Um, in state news, uh, Thursday was uh, an evacuation of uh, Helena High School, but this case was all about gas. Um, what was reported to the police was the smell of gas in one of the offices, which it, this isn't the first time Helena uh, schools have reported evacuations due to gas. Natural gas is fairly common in Montana and can often be described as a kind of a rotten egg smell. Uh, carbon monoxide is one of those gases that are not uh, uh, detectable by human scent. Um, but if you notice uh, headaches or some nausea, um, try to get outside and see if anything changes. But if nothing changes, then go see your doctor. Uh, gas is some uh, uh, gas is something that is dangerous, and it, and it not should be it should it should be not be taken lightly. Uh, Billings uh, is looking to deal with some budget issues by following a union model. So part of the union model is that they're doing uh, um, uh, effective training so for negotiations, especially during uh, major budget shortfalls within the Billings School District. Up to 40 jobs have to be cut based on a lot of the budget cuts that are going towards uh, the Billings schools this particular year. So the three-day meetings will train teachers, administrators, and contractors to work better and learn uh, to work on ongoing crisis that is the budget sor shortfalls in the area. Um, in the national news, uh, the Dems controlled House, uh, they moved forward on a the 1972 amendment on equal rights uh, started to do back in 1972 uh, with party lines voting to for ratifying equal rights to wrap up the uh, 12 states. Um, so why are we, well, why is it taking this long? Uh, a lot of times, uh, back in 1972, they passed the Equal Rights Movement, which was supposed to uh, bring equal pay and equal rights between men and women in economic sake. But in um, 1982, uh, a deadline to implement, to ratify this amendment, was uh, basically delayed indefinitely. So many states did not have to ratify this at all. And so uh, just last January, one of the uh, few states that still uh, that recently admitted it was Virginia. Um, this was to make sure this amendment was to make sure that women were equal. Legal experts had argued that the amendment could protect women economically, like hel helping them get more equal pay and preventing pregnancy discrimination. Ruth Bader Ginsburg wrote, "Every constitution in the world since 1950 has the equivalent of an equal rights amendment, and we don't." 
Although she doesn't consider the uh, current ratification process viable, uh, Ginsburg still believes an Equal Rights Amendment should be passed. In other political news, the Senate voted uh, 55 to 45 to restrict military powers to Trump when it comes to the Iran-U.S. relations, um, as tensions are high, but the state of the U.S., uh, but the, uh, said that the U.S., but that it also stated, sorry, that the U.S. would defend itself under imminent threat, and that's part of what this means. And it got fair, it, it got a lot of support, uh, but it didn't get enough support uh, for a, uh, two, a uh, two-thirds majority, which would be required. But the president still has the power to veto this bill. So that's kind of what's happening in and around the city of Missoula. I have a lot of stuff to talk to talk about, but I'm going to jump in and throw you, uh, show you guys some of the uh, new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some new movies that are coming out this weekend. So in 1981, I got the opportunity uh, to move to Maine, a place overlooking South Freeport Harbor. And down on the harbor, uh, there was a dock with a little shack built on it. So I spent an idyllic five years living on the water and making my uh, wood sculptures out on the dock and, and just uh, brushing my wood chips into the uh, harbor at the end of the day and watching them flo float out to sea. Exaggerated stories from real media outlets, right? It can mean completely false media outlets, right? Completely manufactured by someone else. So it's a, it's a hydra, it's an octopus. There's no one definition. And so some of you uh, tonight will probably come in with your own definition of fake news, and I'm very happy for that because we're not gonna cover all possible iterations of what fake news is. Um, and I think that's really important to lay out there from the start because we could spend the next hour talking about whether CNN is in fact fake news, right? We're not going to do that. But you can see the way the term has been shifted. Be a very celebratory beginning for BBB 2020 and you will see them throughout the week celebrating with us the role of the arts and global human communication. So please give a very warm welcome to our new best friends from Pakistan. Hey guys, welcome back. We're talking about some Sonic, and it's time for some pre-critics. So as you guys are um, excited for, from the makers of all those award-winning movies based on video games, the Razzies, I mean, comes Sonic the Hedgehog, starring the guy from Hop and a Kenny-type character in Westworld, James Marsden. This story follows Sonic as he comes to our world and sees life as a teenage tween meme supreme dude with attitude. Uh, but you can probably see uh, Heart in this movie that follows a saga turned into Nintendo property into a feature length film without legs because he really likes to go fast. Gotta go fast away from this movie. Up next, we got from the studio that brought you Truth or Dare, or Ring Around the Death Rose, or That App Will Kill You, or the thing that you that was supposed to be for kids is played as adults but also will kill you. So, anything basically, everything that you thought was harmless will kill you. Uh, 
Blumhouse Studios uh, brings you the best island getaway where all your uh, dreams come true, but with a horror twist. That's basically what it is. The plane, the plane shall be uttered ironically as these tourists must survive to the end. People will probably die, probably in some clever uh, Bloomhouse way, but overall is not really much of a stress from slasher film with Supernatural. Be careful what you wish for in this kind of movie. This is a movie uh, <laughs> that... I guess is going to be out there this weekend. All right, so as you guys are probably wondering if there's going to be a romance movie, they have um, a they do they do have a romance movie, and this is what it's called. It's called The Photograph from from the excuse me, that was a weird that was indigestion. But don't get you will probably not get indigestion from this movie uh, from the makers of the Candygram and the Telemophony comes the Photograph, which has people in it. Uh, let me just check the synopsis real quick. Okay, a series of intertwining love stories set in the past and in the present. So basically, a guy sees a picture of a girl. She's like, she's hot. I'm going to find out who this girl is. Boom. And uh, I guess since it's a romance, not much of a, like, it's going to be kind of a sweet one. So I, I, it's, not, it's not creepy that he's obsessed with the girl in the photograph, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, it's kind of like a romantic scavenger hunt with love as the prize. Remember when we took such a cute pic that one time? Uh, I want to continue and make more pics of us, of cuteness. So you'll probably hear something like this. I want that... I want that to continue, and I know that you gave me a chance, and history can only exist in these pictures, but it's history worth preserving the end. And, you know, movies, romance, things, and other things. But those are some of the uh, things that are coming out this weekend as well. And I am doing my February love affair with the Three Stooges, so I redubbed one of the Three Stooges. And in this case, they did a animated show uh, back in the 60s, uh, 65 to be more specific, and I'm going to show you a little bit of dubbing stuff, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about some city council stuff, including parts of the uh, city council which had to be lo on lockdown during this whole uh, lockdown thing in downtown Missoula on Wednesday. So stay with me. Ah, Booth Hillville. Population, various. Here we are going to join our heroes on their quest to be the best piano players ever. Move over. Yeah, let me play. Listen to you twos. You gotta play like me. You gotta play like this. Alright, that's enough. We can't have more than three people playing the piano. Ding. <laughs> the next broken key is your face. Yeah, I like to play. You gotta be more like a pianist. Like me. I'm a pianist. You ain't no piano, man. You get out of here. Oh, jeez, everyone's a critic, isn't that right, boss? Yeah, he just doesn't like us three playing. Uh, oh, where'd he go? I guess I'll follow him. <laughs> All right, you mugs, you want to be the queen bee around here? You gotta listen to me. Now check out these dance moves. So dangerous. <laughs> Quit laughing at me. I put myself out there. Well, perhaps a little contemporary dance. I'll tell Curly to spread the word. Y'all ready for this? What did I tell you about talking? I'm just showing your visual achievement of dance. Wow, stop it. I haven't finished wood shopping my dance move. I'm not performance ready. Yo, listen. Yo, listen. I'm calling you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm calling you out. Come on. I got something special for you. <laughs> Oh, I see how it is. You're a coward. I want to tell everyone that you're a coward. You hear me? Do you know? Hmm. <laughs> what was that? Oh, gotta get out of here. Oh no! What? How the heck did I get away over here? Uh, what the? All right, Curly, you have an unfair advantage. No, I'm gonna show you a good part. No, no, please don't do anything to me. I'm only innocent. Let me get this thing out of my pocket. Oh! Oh, yeah! Watch out! Come on now! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! No, 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 no. Oh, this is, this gag is going on way too long. Huh, looks like we finally beat the bus. There's a new sheriff in town, I tell you what. Oh, I'm so excited for an authoritarian government. What do you think, Curly? Not so fast! You're hey, the sheriff? sheriff? Can't you read the badge? So what you're trying to tell me is that this guy's the sheriff? Yeah, I guess. It's time to tie oh. tail it out here. Excuse me. Pardon me. 
Oh, oh. Up in the cup, in the pain, the pain. Will you quit beatboxing already? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council stuff. We're kicking it off. Uh, city council. Uh, one of the big things that has been happening this particular week is that uh, uh, the city uh, did last week received. Uh, uh, well, last week the city uh, posted an article about a certain somebody who uh, threatened the city council, and uh, as of Thursday, he was uh, put on. A, he was put in jail, and he's at a hundred thousand dollar bail and uh phil one of the uh the people who talks on uh his friend's behalf uh um basically said this um in response to the city's um response to uh brandon bryant i'm not defending a threat because it's reprehensible it's unforgivable but this man needs help he's he rejoined the service after getting out because he wanted to try and feel good about himself and he had an accident where a log fell on his head and he didn't get checked out and he kept doing exercises after that and six days later he passed out in the field and had sepsis and um, apparently he uh, had hallucinations of seeing all the, the people he killed in infrared and so obviously this man is very traumatized and I just hope you guys get him help instead of trying to ruin his life more than he's already done all right, so that was uh, Phil, uh, w one of the folks that are speaking on this. But one of the other folks that has been within the group as well is Rembet Miller, who also mentioned that the city handled this in the worst possible way in regards to um, dealing with this threat. I want to congratulate you. I salute you. You've successfully silenced an activist and in doing so have sent a chilling message to this community. Because what exactly has happened here? Bryant was not arrested. No injuries were reported, no charges were filed, no restraining, order, no restraining orders were issued, no temporary orders protection were announced. Bryant has no criminal record and was honorably discharged from active duty. City Attorney Nugent knows all of this, of course, but somehow allowed this story to spin out of control anyway. You've put people's lives in danger by doing what you've done. I was warned about the political retaliations of the Angan regime when I started showing up here, and now that I've seen them for myself, I can't help but wonder what more you have planned. I can't help but wonder how you're planning on silencing me for my part in showing up to these meetings and opposing these TIF giveaways. But even though I can't help but wonder these things, my family are not so thrilled about the idea of finding out what kind of political retributions you might have in store for me. All right, so uh, that was... Uh uh, the, one of the uh, quotes during this meeting as well, talking a little bit more about this. But, of course, if you did read the article in the Missoula, you will see quotes lifted from meetings where uh, Brandon Bryant implied that he would use a stick that he brought to one of the meetings to end human life. The article also said that the city police were working with the individual about it, along with others trying to help him along the way. Um, the last couple of months have been pretty interesting roller coaster rides to the city of Missoula. There's been a lot of folks speaking against the city on TIF funding. Many of the folks have spoken regularly, but these facts remain that this person threatened the city council and many members fear feared for their lives as a result, stationed a police officer within the meeting at the all city board meetings. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, Megan Bra Bailey, uh, she during a public comment section, she reflects on the six hundred thousand dollar grant for uh, mental health providers and a pr a attachment for the br for the prison, so it can diverge some people who have mental issues rather than just throwing them in jail. And this is what she had to say mental health provider. Um, I have a lot of experience in both state and federal contracts, and I never saw that go out for public bid at all, which is really disturbing to me, um, especially if you look at what just happened in Helena with that same network and their breach of contract. So I did get in touch with somebody at the city. They got right back to me very quickly, and it appears as though the threshold for being considered as a recipient of an award of that nature has to do with whether or not you existed a decade ago and if you attend community forums. My group has never been invited to attend any of these forums. I don't even know where they're at, what's going on. Um, I've connected with several other networks in town um, who also should have been allowed 
to put in for a bid. None of us have any idea what's going on or how this one particular network became a recipient of this award. So that's the first piece. The second piece, along a similar vein, I saw that we're going to create a clinic inside of the food bank. I think that's great. Um, nationally, that's on par with trends. That's a good idea. I understand that the federally qualified health center, which is Partnership Health Center, is going to be the recipient of that. But my question is, why wasn't that put out to bid? Because I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but we have two federally qualified health centers in this community, the other one being the Missoula Urban Indian Health Center. I do a lot of work in Indian country, and I'm curious as to why that wasn't put out for bid and why our Urban Indian Health Center wasn't given an opportunity to also competitively put in for that sort of an opportunity. All right. So... Uh um, just speaking of uh, a lot of times where grants and uh, bids are awarded to certain groups, a lot of times uh, through city meetings, it's a lot easier for a lot of these organizations who work with the city already to be able to be awarded a lot of these grants and funds. It's kind of like saying is like um, when somebody gets money and says like, hey, why didn't I get money? And it's it's a question of not asking for, for the most part. Oftentimes, these places are overlooked in the grant process, and there are always other organizations that help a lot of people which also brings me to this next proclamation when it comes to um, a proclamation by, read by um, City Council President uh, Gwen Jones. As the City of Missoula joins with Canada to spur awareness in Montana, the Great Plains region, and the United States for murdered and missing Indigenous women, and whereas there is not a comprehensive estimate of Indigenous women who are missing and murdered in the United States, but many factors contribute to this crisis, such as fear, stigma, legal barriers, racism, sexism, and the devastating levels of violence in the US. And whereas nearly half of all Native American women in the United States have been raped, beaten, or stalked by an intimate partner, they are 2.5 times more likely to experience sexual assault. One in three will be raped in her lifetime, a Native woman is more likely to die by homicide than by illness. Intentional homicide has been the third leading cause of death for Native females aged 10 to 24. And on some reservations, Native women and girls are murdered at more than 10 times the national average. And whereas for more than 20 years there have been awareness raising efforts in Canada on Valentine's Day and the Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women Awareness Day seeks to build support by increasing awareness in the United States. Now, therefore, John Engen, Mayor of Missoula, Montana, does hereby proclaim Friday, February 14th, 2020, as Murdering, Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women Awareness Day. All right, so that was Gwen Jones uh, reflecting on that. They uh, had a couple people speak on behalf of the proclamation. Jen Harrington reflects on trafficking and other uh, problems that um, Indigenous women have to face. So missing, Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women's Crisis is about patterns and a refusal to do what's necessary to stop them. Patterns of violent men and extractive industries breezing through land that they do not own to take lives that do not belong to them. Patterns of tribal sovereignty being undermined and jurisdictional borders being crossed. Patterns of police dismissing concerned mothers and fathers, aunties and grandparents. See excuses that runaways always come back. Patterns of coroners dodging paperwork and scrawling other next to the, the line titled race and accidental death next to cause of death. Patterns of government officials top to bottom ignoring practical sovereignty first reforms and instead hoarding the kind of power that keeps this crisis alive. The third leading cause of death among American Indian women is murder. According to a study done by the Urban Indian Health Institute in 2016, the states with the highest number of MMIWG cases were Arizona with 54, Alaska with 52, California with 40, and Montana with 42. Of course, one of the stories is that recently Indian girl Selena Not Afraid went missing for three weeks, um, only to be found a mile away from the last place that she was seen. And the police officials say it was hypothermia and closed the case without further follow-up. There were many folks who spoke on this proclamation, and if you're from Montana, American Indians are part of the way, part of your life, whether you are related by blood or not. The whole reading and comments are on MCAT's uh, Facebook page, along with their YouTube. Uh, we reposted all the quotes and the proclamations as well, and you can check that out. But 
you can always watch the city of Missoula's city council meeting by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, moving on, we're going to be talking about public safety and health. Um, and one of the, and during this meeting, uh, Stacy uh, Stacy Anderson opens the meeting, um, kind of shaken up from the uh, current situation at that time, which was the lockdown. So this is what she had to say. Um, we, given the circumstances of today, are going to have a slightly abbreviated uh, version, and we're going to change the order in which things appear, because some of the folks who are planning to present were not able to be here. So we are going to start it off with a update from the fire department. And this the fire department is the one that spoke um, during this meeting as well. Um, what they were originally planning for the Wednesday committee meetings were basically pushed, and many people weren't... Uh, weren't going to be at the city council meeting, but since the uh, fire department was already there, uh, they had more people talking. Fire Chief uh, Jeff Brandt, fire department, talked about the administrative updates and how the fire department is working for the city. Uh, Gordy Hughes, Fire Prevention Bureau, speaks about growth and other factors impacting insurance, and this is what he had to say about this. This year, um, and a lot of that is going to uh, be... Uh, pointed toward the new annexation that we've um, taken in. There's going to be some issues with that because of that growth and how we are able to provide services to that area. Um, another major factor in that is the um, acquisition of the water system. Since now the city maintains control of that, uh, that may have an impact as to how the survey plays out. Uh, the 911 Center has implemented a new uh, software programming for CAD and um, uh, dispatch, and that's going to be beneficial. So that might also help the uh, overall ISO rate. All right. So a uh, part of uh, one of the many things that the city of Missoula is adopting is they're planning to add a an additional fire station, which would be called fire station number six. And they were going to be placing it up uh, where the Air airport boulevard expressway area is going to be, because ever since the annexation of airport boulevard, it was a major growth within the city, especially Ward 2, as they are readjusting a lot of their boundary lines just to implement some of that stuff. Many folks are worried about the county to fire department that oversaw this area in the first place, uh, but the city is within the county and the county will not stop doing their job within the county regardless of city's infrastructure growth within the community as well. Uh, they also talked about fire hydrants because um, with fire hydrants, they look at the assets and whether or not they need it at specific locations or they have a different location where they can have a, a more widely available space for a lot of houses in the area as well. Brad Davis, Assistant Fire Chief of Operation, talks about lending vehicles during uh, the fire seasons, and this is what he had to say. We've, we've taken advantage of that government surplus, um, and we, did, we started doing that just a few years ago when we were able to, uh, to get a, one of our older ambulances that we, we have the ability to transport with it, and it is fully state licensed to transport but its primary function at this time is to um, contract out for wildland assignments. And so we were able to, through this government surplus, as other government agencies are retiring apparatus, they can give it away for free to other government agencies. And so basically for the cost of transport, we were able to acquire that ambulance and then we were able to send it out on wildland fires yes, last year and it was just pure revenue coming in from that. So that's been a great move. All right. So a part of the, what the city has been doing is that during the uh, fire season, they're able to uh, lease out some of the, uh, their equipment for the uh, efforts against fighting forest fires within the state of Montana and uh, uh, nearby areas as well, Idaho. And part of that it really helps with bringing revenue, especially with that uh, money from Montana and on the federal levels. Uh, of course, part of the city allows... Uh, lo city. Okay, so Brad Davis, uh, he also talks about the new station number six, uh, which is also um, something he's alluding to. So here's a, when I show you this, it's gonna kind of show you an area map. And in that area map, you're gonna see uh, particulars of the uh, kind of like the expressway uh, map and kind of like up north near the airport. West, we already have identified a deficiency in that industrial area with our um, response time for ladder truck and, and our second due apparatus out in that area. And as we continue to develop and put more out there and we develop these connectors between um, Mullen and West Broadway, I think this is a great opportunity to look at um, 
in the next three to five years a potential station out there and, and being ahead of that and looking at acquiring some some acreage out there um, for a potential future station. So I did put together a, like an option one, option two um, right here and that yellow circle would be a one and a half ring mile ring around option one which would be um, grabbing some land on this uh, George Elmer connector kind of closer to the West Broadway um, access and I think that would give us better access to come back into District 4 and then out to that industrial and then like an option two would be right above where England and uh, George Elmer kind of right at that intersection that's that orange circle that you see there all right so it's a it's a great location for a fire station as well to be able to even go down south to England Boulevard the area in which you know all those uh Places are the Costco, all those uh, the de developments of housing and stuff like that. It's, it's just a lot of great opportunities for a uh, fire department to really just kind of expand, uh, and especially with the increase in the tax bracket with a lot of those places that were annexed would also help fund a lot of this as well. So there's a lot of revenue uh, that the, the city fire department officials are looking to utilize, but a lot of times um, firefighters, uh, there's usually about a hundred and like I did the, I was doing the math. I was looking at the national average. There's about 167 full-time firefighters per 100,000 population. So that's uh, basically one firefighter per uh, 600 people, roughly. Which is also why fire stations have one of the largest volunteer forces. And as of 2018, 31% were career firefighters and 69% were volunteers. Firefighters go on most emergency calls with 70% of their calls being medical related according to uh, governing.com. Uh, of course, this was an informational only island. Uh, this is update, just kind of seeing where this uh, the fire department is currently within the city and their plans for the future. So you can find out more information about your city council and more by logging on to ci.missoula.mt. Uh, there's definitely a lot to talk about, and there's a lot going on within the city of Missoula as well. Um, and just uh, just uh, a little uh, allude to the lockdown that happened on Wednesday. Uh, so far, it's uh, kind of like uh, if you have any information, you're told to call the police um, for any information or any uh, knowledge about what happened. And it, and it is an active investigation that is ongoing. All right. So I have some um, art clips for you guys. This is uh, some new art clips featuring at the Zootown Arts Community Center. And then when I come back, I'm going to be talking to more about events. And I also have another art clip that is completely brand new from the International Cups, which is going to be at the Clay Studio. But first, here's Zach. And uh, the, that art clip is uh, uh, brought to you in part by Rick Phillips, uh, employee here at Missoula Community Access Television. All right, let's talk about some things that are happening uh, within the city of Missoula. We're talking about the uh, Big Sky uh, – the, the 17th annual Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, excuse me. Um, Part of this is that at the Zach showroom, starting this morning, uh, almost as I'm talking right now, uh, the Big Sky Film Institute is at the Zach Anchor Tenant, and they'll be using the Zach as their ticket headquarters for the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival 2020. There will also be multiple screenings daily in the Zach showroom. Of course, for the list of events, you can go to BigSkyFilmFest.org. There's so much going on. It's going to be at the Zach, 
Elks Lodge, Wilma, and the Roxy. All those places are going to be hosting the Big Side Documentary Film Festival with over 170 films. Um, I, I heard it was 180, but I'm just playing it safe with 170. Uh, there's the Outdoor Recreation Motorsport Show at the Southgate Mall. If you go to the Southgate Mall and you notice a bunch of boats and a bunch of recreation uh, motor vehicles, that's what's going on. Get your air adrenaline pumping and check out the season's hottest motorbikes, boats, ATVs, side-by-side snowmobiles, and more that's just on display. Um, Tiny Tales and Storytime is at the Missoula Public Library. Missoula Public Library is a great uh, uh, introduction into books and reading for a lot of young kids who are just about ready to go to school, and they say that kids learn nine new words a day when they're exposed to books. Uh, a new angle podcast, uh, Rachel Gregg, um, with the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, will be uh, on the radio, and you can uh, find this out at um, a new angle podcast.com to listen. Uh, a New Angle is a weekly podcast about cool people doing awesome things in and around Montana and is produced by the University of Montana College of Business professor Justin Angle and is proudly su- uh, supported by First Security Bank and Blackford Communication. A new pod launches every Tuesday and you can check back for updates and links each week. And once again, you can go to a new angle podcast.com to learn more about What's going on with the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival? But also, I wanted to allude to uh, MCAT because every uh, every day at 5 p.m., um, MCAT is uh, showing um, uh, Missoula Live, hosted by our very own uh, general manager here at MCAT, Joel Baird, where he interviews nonprofits. And Rachel Gregg was one of those uh, guests on that show talking about the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. Cat, uh, Cribbage and Bridge, Missoula Senior Center. If you're out and about and you're already while going to a documentary at the uh, Roxy Theater, you can go on back down to Cribbage and Bridge, have some lunch, and destroy some old people at some cribbage and or bridge. Uh, and that's happening at the Best Dance Floor in Missoula, Missoula Senior Center. Uh, bead Nodding, uh, Bathing Beauties Beads. This is a instruction is free with the purchase of the materials. It's $15 per person, but you'll need to pick out your materials upon registration. Um, it's a free class. You're only paying for the materials. And it starts at 3 p.m. at the Bathing, uh, bathing Beauties Beads. Um, and, hey, it's uh, romantic out there, and the Keep Restaurant is doing a four-course Valentine's meal at the Keep Restaurant. It's sixty-five dollars, whoo! But it's and it's sixty-five dollars per person. It's not per couple. So, and you can call them at seven two eight five one three two for reservations. But I'm pretty sure reservations might be filling up because uh, tonight is probably not the night to uh, get any kind of restaurant reservation, as uh, Valentine's Day is a big day for a lot of uh, romantic evenings out on the town. Um, and speaking of ro- uh, romance, uh, Glacier Art Shrink is doing a sweetheart skate. Um, grab a special person from 6 to 8 p.m. on Friday at the Glacier Ice Rink. Uh, a two-for-one admission and uh, concession specials. Uh, they'll, uh, they'll set the mood with romantic lighting music, and you can commemorate uh, the evening in the photo booth. It's $6 for two adults or $4 for two youths and seniors. Skate rentals are also additional $3 if you bring your own skates. Uh, Valentine's Day Square Dance. It's going to be happening at Free Cycles tonight, uh, tonight at 7 p.m. Free Cycles is a nonprofit here in Missoula which teach people how to make and create and uh, have their own bikes as well. So if you are uh, have zero to uh, no budget, which is the same thing, but two different words. Um, Free Cycles of Missoula is the place to be, but this is a uh, suggested donation of 5 to $10. They're non-profit. They're always looking for donations. Um, no partner is necessary for this Valentine's uh, Day square dance. And the nice thing about square dancing is that you can dance with multiple people and uh, not even know it. You're square dancing, they swing your partner around and around, and then you change your partner around and around. And yeah, it's going to be hosted by the good folks at Free Cycles, uh, Bob Giordano and all those folks down there as well. And hey, what a, what another romantic night to enjoy some opera presents Medium. Um, medium tells the tale of um, Flora. She's a medium. She holds a uh, fake senses, mm, assisted by her daughter Monica and by the young boy Toby, whom they've taken in. But during one of the uh, senses, uh, th- things seem to turn real. And uh, Baba starts to come apart despite the, uh, to explain the touch from beyond. Medium. Uh, Dr. Stephen Calm is the guest artist playing the role of Gian- Gianni uh, Shichi. Shichi. Hmm. 
Okay, and that's going to be at the University of Montana Saturday night, wrapping that up. I mean, speaking of Saturday night, they have a whole, they have a bunch of documentaries happening that, that uh, all day today, kicking things off with a uh, tonight at the Bone Thugs and the Har- oh no, never mind, that has nothing to do with the documentary film festival. Uh, but they're also doing a homegrown comedy competition at the the Roxy. It's going to be some comedy starting at 7 p.m. They have the Sweetheart Dance at the Lolo Community Center. Uh, they have Paint and Sip Valentine's Couples Painting at the Painting with a Twist. Um, let's see. What else do they have? Um, yeah. Th- and then they have a bunch of music and dancing and all that stuff all around the town at the Badlander Sunrise Southern Union Club and Top Hat. And you don't want to miss it. It's the night to be out and about and uh, just hang out. And that pretty much does it for your Friday events. I did want to throw it to International Cups before I jumped into Saturday events. So here are some of the new uh, International Cups where they invite uh, from 30-plus different countries to come on down and uh, show their artwork at the Cups, International Cups 2020. And this will end by the end of this month. Some good music for, uh, provided by our very own Rook Phillips with some beautiful visuals of the International Cups during International Cups, which is lasting until early March. So you can you can bet your bottom dollar they'll be switching things out by the end of this month as well. All right, let's move on to some Saturday. Hey, you plan on going out to the farmer's market? Hey, you meet that special someone, you're rushing things along. What better way for a couple than to go to the farmer's market? And they're doing it a winter market at the Orchard Homes. It's off of Reserve and 3rd Street. You guys can go there uh, Saturday morning after you have a romantic night before. Uh, there's outdoor recreation and motorsport show at the Southgate Mall. Oh, continuing on, uh, blah, blah, blah. They have the Heartthrob 5K. So when your heart beats for that special someone or not, you can your heart be, it can throb at Silver Park happening tomorrow. Tomorrow morning started at 10 a.m. It's a midwinter 5K. Did you know that the heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women in the U.S.? In fact, one in every four deaths is, is a result of heart disease. Regular exercise is a great way to develop healthy hearts. So do your heart some good and come out for the Fun Run 5K event at Silver Park starting at 10 a.m. Tomorrow, uh, they got the Rocky Mountain Elf Foundation is doing a kids' event talking about the Wildcats. Uh, they're learning about Wildcats of Montana. Come to the Rocky Mountain uh, Elk Foundation Visitor Center and learn about Wildcats, make animal tracks, use laser shot, and explore the, the Visitor Center. It, it is a free event from 11 to 1 p.m. for those kiddos. Uh, Winter Story Time with Ellen Balmer. Uh, Travers Rose State Park is a great place. They do something every single Saturday. Uh, Ellen Balmer presents untold stories of Montana minorities. These uh, stories open up a dialogue about minorities in the communities, both past and present. African Americans, Chinese, Japanese, and Swedish pioneers helped anchor Montana in many ways. MUD reopen cel- reopening celebration and tool sale. So, Missoula Urban Demonstration Project for the past month, the Urban Demonstration MUD project has been at hard at work updating the tool library to the best possible resource for all of Missoulians. From noon to 4 p.m., come enjoy drinks and refreshments in their 
in the uh, in our rejuvenated space and shop in our selected heavy discounted use used tools for sale. And during this time as well, MCAT is hosting a Saturday drop-in. Every Saturday, MCAT hosts a Saturday drop-in for kids aged 9 to 14, roughly. And it is a great way for kids to do some stop animation, movie making, and creating a community of future filmmakers. And all it happens from 1 to 5 p.m. every single Saturday until Memorial Day. And it's $10 for kid, $15 per sibling. Uh, and then I wanted to go back to uh, more specific in the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. One of the more popular segments is shorts. And a lot of people don't want to sit through maybe an hour and a half, two hours of a documentary. But people can really get into documentaries by going to the shorts, which will be running at the Wilma in many different blocks starting at 1, 2.30, and I think about 4 p.m. at the, at the Wilma Theater where they're going to have a, a couple of short blocks uh, showing at the Wilma starting tomorrow around 1. Montana Natural History Center Discovery Day. Montana Natural History Center captures the beauty of forms of winter plants, grasses, and dried flowers in your own uh, canotype. Uh, photographer and uh, author Peggy Christian leads the Science Discovery Day. Uh, winter plants, the photograms will be made using the photosensitive surface, organic materials, and exposure to the light box. Learn about this photographic printing process and then head out to the Discovery Gardens to cut dried specimen. And of course, most of the events uh, 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 is happening is the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. Once again, I can't stress enough just how important this is. And it basically turns uh, Missoula into a Sundance Film Festival, but geared towards documentaries. It's one of the biggest documentary film festivals around. Many people just don't, never, don't ever, not ever, think about them documentaries. And it's a great way to do it. And you can go to BigSkyFilmFest.org. Actually, I will do that for you. And I will show you their wonderful website where you can find out more information. It's happening February 14th through the 23rd. And if you love, love documentaries, this will be the perfect place for you. Lists and lists and selections and selections of documentaries. Look at all these stuff. 2020 selection. I was showing this on Joel's show, Missoula Live, as I was running the back behind the scenes tech. I can scroll and just goes on. And it goes on, and it goes on, and on, and on, and on. And these are all the documentaries that you guys can enjoy. Um, and you can look up Showtimes and more, um, BigSkyFilmFest.org. Uh, or you can stop by MCAT because we have a couple booklets here. Or you can stop by the Zach because that's where you can buy some tickets and some booklets as well for a lot of these events. So that pretty much does it for my morning show. I just wanted to say thank you for joining me. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And for Wake Up Missoula and Missoula and Missoula Community Access Television, I'm Scott Ramph.